died on the cross, was raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who had fallen asleep. God, that through this mystery, your servant Jerry, who has done her less in Christ, may share in the joy of his resurrection. We ask this, from Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who is the name of you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the first meeting. Please stand for the gospel. <coughs> At that time, Jesus said in the reply, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to you revealed them to light, not like child light. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Father except the Son, and the Father knows no one. Sorry. <clears throat> the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and any one to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all who labor and are overburdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. And learn from me, for I am weak and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy and my burden is <coughs> light. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. One could almost say that. Today what we're celebrating is the story of Jerry's life. (coughs) 
But if there's wherever people have lived, there is a story to be told. In fact, each of us has a unique story to tell. And that's the story of our life. But we don't stop telling it until we die. That is the start. And everybody's story deserves to be listened to and to be taken seriously. Because it is his or her story. And to reject a person's story is to reject that person. And we find it so happen, often happens in today's world. When a person dies, we begin to tell that person's story. Their life story passes before the eyes of our mind. And it is all laid out before us with the joys and sorrows, successes and failures. Sadly, all our stories end in death. Some at an early age, others as they get older. From a personal perspective, my wife died at the age of 40. Son was 15 at the or 19 at the time, my daughter was 15. Well, that of course is now 36, 37 years ago. It was only years later that I came to understand that if life hadn't happened that way, I would not be what I am now. Some of you know me, most of you don't. I retired in 99 in a senior position in the International Bank. I had already become a priest by that time. I'm one of these oddball characters who does everything in reverse. And sometimes that's good, sometimes more difficult. But life is to be built. Even when death comes naturally, and at the end of the long line, we do not like our stories to end that way. We've been brought up in a world which teaches that everybody lived happily ever after. That's not reality. Because in that world, even slowly and badly, no matter what heights they have taken us to, can leave us even worse than if we have never heard. Yet we live in a world where death is more talked about than life. One only needs to turn open the newspaper. The headlines, the radio news, the television news are all dominated day in, day out by death. And yet, somehow or other, it doesn't affect us until one close to us passes. Today, we stand with Jerry's family in the darkness and in the shadow of the death. But we are not without light, nor are we without hope. We are not without a friend. Jerry has died with this life, yes, and there is sorrow in us. But if we are believers in Christ, we know that Jerry has passed into eternal life. Baptism, she was declared a sister of Christ. 
So in our grief today, we come before our Lord and say, Lord, your friend has died. And the Lord will come to us. In fact, in our hearts we know that he is already with us. He understands our loss. He does not dry our tears. For they are right, proper, and necessary. But he shares our grief and gives us hope. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet he shall live. That, my dear friends, is a revolutionary statement. Christ declares that he, in his own person, is the victory over death. And that's what we celebrated last week. Easter Sunday, the risen Christ. Christ is eternal life. In Him, what was once a hope in a far distant future has become a present reality. A reality that Jerry is now experiencing that love of Christ has now been brought to fulfillment. He brought to fulfillment for all of us in due course. That of evidence is the greatness of our faith, our Christian faith. Eternal life is not something that happens to us when we die. To baptism, baptism, we already have eternal life within us. That seed is already well and truly planted where its full blossoming only comes after death. This is because in Christ we have already touched the very life of God which is immortal. We are not to be overwhelmed. What sustains us is our faith in Christ which assures us that life will prevail over death. Through his death and resurrection, Christ has taken the sting out of death. And may one of way on earth is he going with all this. We see, we've got this crazy idea that death is the end. No, it isn't. The biggest consolation I had, and again, personal reflection, when after my wife had died, I took my daughter, who was at that time 15, to do the monthly shopping. We'd given ourselves a budget. You know what she said when we got through the till and we paid? She said, Dad, you know, Mom would have been proud of us. We kept to the budget. And it was those things that kept us going. We were there for each other. When the one was down, the others were up. Nothing that applies to all of us. We share our lives with our family. And our children, if you listen carefully, the children and the grandchildren, and hopefully at some stage the great grandchildren, will repeat the words that we have spoken. I catch myself very often using words that my father had spoken very then 30 years ago. Which my mother had spoken. She died the same year. I'm very close to the age they were. You know, I joke about it. But I'm hitting the big eight zero this year. Believe it or not. I really want the bishop. You may not have me much longer. You know, I'm being a little bit. He got the shock of his life because he thought I was 67. 
Så er det bygget op af det. But it's important that we live in our lives and that we continue to live them after the shock we've had with Jerry. The last word on the difference of each of our stories belongs to God. Yet in a way our stories, as I said, live on through our children, our grandchildren, and all those people who we have touched with our lives. May God bless you all. God is mighty Father, raised Christ his Son from the dead. With confidence we ask him to save all of his people, living and dead. For Jerry, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that she may now be admitted to the company of the saints. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness. Lord, hear us. Lord, we For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face, Lord, hear us. Lord, we For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may gather together again in God's kingdom, Lord, hear us. Lord, we hear our prayer. For our shelter and our strength, we must be up to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brothers and sisters, cleanse them of their sins, and grant them the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Nigerians and Katrina has asked them to do the village in so it's both my privilege and fear. So <laughs> we'll do it. So Jerry and my great person, Jill and my very person. Jerry, as we know, her was born and raised on the 20th of October 1938. The eldest daughter of Frederick and Winifred Gleason. Jerry was the youngest sibling of five. Ellen, Barbara, Anita, Pauline, and then along came Jerry. The family lived in Vincent Ann when the kids were born, then moved to 119 Oraki Road. Jerry did her primary school education at St Michael's in Renuera. The family then moved to Lower Hutt to live for Fred's job. And when Jerry was about to start secondary school, so she was the only one of the siblings that actually did her secondary education in Wellington, where she attended Sacred Heart College. Auntie Pauline told me, Auntie Pauline is the only person here today, um, Auntie Pauline told me when Jerry was just six weeks old, their mum Winifred put Jerry in a beautiful English frame. And Pauline, who was just four at the time, was left to look after her while Winifred went back and got something from the house. Both the girls had been dressed up immaculately for a forthcoming outing. Auntie Pauline thought she'd help out and give Jerry a little walk around and took the break off. Unfortunately, the prayer with Jerry in it went down the hill and hit an incinerator. <laughs> Fortunately, not going, but not forgotten. Pauline says she never meant to do any harm, wasn't trying to kill her, and remembers the incident vividly. She also reminded me that a four year old shouldn't be left with a child. <laughs> Jerry was always popular and had a real sense of fun. And from what I remember, my mum telling me and Auntie Pauline and Jerry herself, she pushed the boundaries. Jerry's great friend Josephine, or Joe, could tell us many stories, but unfortunately lives in Sydney and unable to travel today. She tells the story of two of them at 17, burning off some hot guys on the hut road in a very fast holding because their dad, um, Jerry, the person dad, um, Fred, had um, actually worked for several bowels and that, so they always had holdings. I think it's a very small story, but it tells us that Jerry lived life from an early age. Jerry, when leaving school, went and worked as a receptionist at Lower Hutt Hotel. And then she moved and went to Wellington in the same capacity. And unknown to most of us, until yesterday, <laughs> at the same time she was modeling her fashion shows for a fashion house. Now that's no surprise because she was simply beautiful inside and out. And you'll see that from some of the slideshows. She's retained this natural beauty, and throughout the years until her last days, when she was just 22 years of age, she moved to King's Cross in Sydney, and she and Josephine lived there for two to three years. I remember being in awe of this experience. Geraldine also spent a long time living at, a short time living in Melbourne, but preferred Sydney. She married William Peebeck, Willie, at St Michael's Church in Rangiwera in 1966, and Katrina was born in 1971, making a family. They lived in Jaleta Ave, Mount Roscoe, and most of us cousins would know that. The marriage did not last, and Jerry bravely moved on and separated when Katrina was just three years of age. She was an amazing mum. She and Katrina moved to Devonport for a few years, and they moved around to quite a lot of places until settling together in Mulgane Ave in New Windsor. At this stage, Jerry, Jerry had been working as a real estate agent for quite a while. And Jerry purchased her first home on her own. In time, Katrina went to Nanny and Lake Tahoe, and Jerry would visit and travel around with Katrina. They would do roadies, visiting many states, playing Mustang Sally, singing together, laughing and loving their special time together. Katrina and Jerry in later years would also travel to Australia together and Jerry would go on her own to see her good friends. Jerry had special friends in Wellington, like Flo, who died a few years ago, Joe and Margaret in Sydney, Barbara Kay, who she met when they were both solo mums in Auckland and they worked together in the Mix and Mingle Club. At this stage, Jerry was in real estate and had been since prior to buying her first home. In time, she would come to meet Horace Cassidy, known as Horry. 
I remember my parents had a really soft spot for him and remember spending time with them together. Together they worked in real estate and moved to Tairua to start their own business. Jerry was an exceptional salesperson and did well in real estate as she really knew people well. She was personable and she was humble. Jerry loved Tairua. She had a lovely home on the hill. She stayed in real estate until she retired at 72 years of age. Some of the family's special memories are beautiful Christmases together in Tairua with Katrina and Rob's boys, Charlie, Spencer and Oliver. And all of those boys have worked in local businesses on holiday breaks and in recent years have gone down and spent heaps of time with Jerry, who they all adored. Jerry loved telling me when I phoned that the boys had been down. She was so proud of them. Jerry was an active person in the Tyrell community and loved by so many, which is pretty obvious today. She was involved in community, giving her time to coffee groups, Provis, working in the library, and just listening to people, always with a welcoming smile and always an open door. In her 60s, she made the most of travelling and travelled to the UK often. She went to Ireland several times and even found the Gleason family home in Dublin and was invited <coughs> to see the original home her father had been born in. She was a goer. She was never the homemaker, but she was an amazing mother, mother-in-law, ray, sister, aunt and friend. In recent weeks, I've spent lots of time with Jerry getting to laugh at times, chat, pay two nails, <laughs> and had that time because I felt that it was such a short time and there wasn't much time left. I've watched as Katrina and Rob and the boys have played a special part in Jerry's love sports. She loved you all, she was proud of you. She would often talk about how good you all were to her, and I know you will miss her, but no, she's not far away. You've gone now, Jerry. You leave a huge void to be filled, but we know you are watching us.
Saints of God, come to her aid, hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. May Christ who called you take it to himself. May 
angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Eternal destiny on the earth, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. Let us pray. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Jerry. In a sure and certain hope that together with all who die in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings you bestowed upon Jerry in this life. They are signs up to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us to remain to comfort one another with the assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister forever, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we're going to ask, is it Max? I love the little touch of the Irish blessing. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind always, sorry, may the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. The rain that falls soft upon your fields. <coughs> and until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Thank you. 